Hello students, welcome to the second lecture of accounting and finance of commonwealth of learning MBA MPA program. First of all, let us have a look on the learning objectives of today lecture. Our learning objectives are to understand the types of classification and sub classifications of items in a transaction, how to prepare an account, what are the types of accounts to learn recording of transactions in accounts to get an understanding of the double entry system and its feature the accounting cycle to achieve our objective we learn types of classification sub classifications under each classification format of t account types of t accounts rules of recording transaction in accounts what is the double entry system and at the last the features of double entry system. What can be the classifications of items in accounting? Please recall the first lecture in which we read that the classification is the first step of accounting and in this step we classify the items involved in a transaction into capital, assets, liabilities, income or expense each item in a transaction and its respective account shall be classified according to its nature for that specific or particular business. The classification of item provides the basis of recording that particular transaction in the respective accounts. Now we will discuss in detail with examples all these classifications one by one. First of all we will learn what is capital? The investment made in a business by the owner is called capital. Please remember the investment can be made either in cash or in kind and in both. For example, the cash investment can be exemplified as Mr. Khan deposited rupees 1 million in bank account of his business in the name of Messrs. Khan and Company while putting the personal asset or computer in office use can be the example of investment in kind. Moving forward with classifications, let we know learn assets. Assets are the resources owned by a business. Building, plant, cash and stocks are the examples of assets. Here we take examples of two transactions in which the items involved can be classified as assets. In first transaction, Messrs Khan and Company purchased a computer worth rupees 30,000. In this transaction, computer is to be classified as an asset. In second example, Messrs Khan and Company purchased furniture for rupees 35,750 rupees. In this transaction, furniture is also to be classified as an asset. Now we discuss liabilities. Liabilities are the money owed to a business. For example, bank loan, creditors are the example of liabilities. Now we take examples of two transactions in which the items involved can be classified as liabilities. In first transaction, Messer Khan and Company takes a bank loan of rupees 300,000. In this transaction, bank loan is to be classified as a liability. However, in second example, Messer Khan and Company purchased a mobile phone worth rupees 12,250 rupees on credit from Messer Mobile Zone. In this transaction, Messer Mobile Zone, the supplier, is to be classified as a liability and categorized as creditor. What is income? Income is the monetary value of goods and services supplied to the customers. Income can be earned 
by providing goods, services, or both. These are the examples of income transactions. In first example, Maser Khan and company sold the mobile phone in rupees 15,000. This is the example where income is generated from providing goods. While in second example, Maser Khan and company charge rupees 2,500 rupees for repair of a mobile. In this example, the income is generated from providing services. At the last, we understand what are expenses. Expenses are the cost of carrying on a business or you can say that expenses are the cost incurred to earn revenue. Salaries of employees, utility bills and shop rent are the examples of expenses. In first example, Messer Khan and company paid salaries of rupees worth 25,000 to the staff for the month of May 2011. While in second example, Messer Khan and company paid the electricity bill for the month of May 2011 worth rupees 3,750 rupees. Now we have to answer the question that whether these classifications can be further subclassified? The answer is yes, but only the liabilities, assets and expenses can be further subclassified. Both the classifications, liabilities and assets can be further subclassified into current and non-current liabilities and assets respectively. Now we discuss what are the current liabilities. The obligations that a business need to be settled within a year are subclassified as current liabilities. For example, creditors and tax payable. However, debts and obligations that a business need to be settled after a year are called non-current liabilities. For instance, lease liability and long-term loan. Similarly, assets that are expected to be used, sold or consumed within a year are called current assets. For example, cash and stock. However, assets that are expected to be used within more than a year are called non-current assets. Long-term investment, property, plant and machinery are the examples of non-current assets. Now comes the expenses. Generally speaking, Utilization of funds is defined as an expense. This general concept is redefined, rather refined in the accounting by subclassifying the utilization of funds into revenue expenses and capital expenses. Utilization of funds that provide immediate benefit is called revenue expenses. For example, having a cold drink of worth rupees 15 or having a dinner of rupees 1000 in both cases, an individual get the benefit of fund utilization immediately by consuming these things. Similarly, for a business, paying salaries and utility bills are the examples of revenue expenses. The accounting treatment of both subclassifications of expenses is different. Only revenue expenses are accounted for as expense and taken as expense for calculation of profit or loss, while the capital expenses are accounted for as assets and not taken as expenses for calculation of profit or loss. Up till now, we have learned the first step of accounting in detail, that is classification. Our next topic shall cover the second step, which is summarizing. Moving forward, we will learn what is an account. Account is a record of business transactions of a particular nature, item, individual or organization. For example, sales account, cash account, salaries account and others. It means we have to maintain separate account for each nature of item, each individual or organization. Now we discuss the format of an account. Each account must have a title which represent the name of account. It can be the nature of an item like cash, sales or it can be in the name of an individual or organization. Each account has T-like shape. Therefore, sometimes 
it is also called T account. Each account has dual sides, left hand side and right hand side. Left hand side is called debit side and represented as DR, while right hand side is called credit side and represented as CR. Each side of account further divided into columns of date, description, second effect, folio and amount. In date column, we record the date of transaction. In description, we mention the narrative description of transaction. And in amount column, we enter the amount of transaction. The concept of second effect and folio will be discussed later on. Now comes the types of accounts. There are two types of accounts, personal accounts and impersonal accounts. The type of account can be identified by the title of an account. What do we mean by personal account? It is an account opened in the name of an individual or an organization. For example, customers and suppliers account. All other accounts which are not personal accounts are called impersonal accounts. Impersonal accounts can be further divided into two categories, real accounts and nominal accounts. All assets accounts are real accounts, while all accounts representing income, expenses and liabilities are called nominal accounts. Now when we have learned what is an account and format of an account, we discuss the recording of transaction in accounts. Either we have to enter a transaction on debit side of an account or on credit side of an account. Answer to this question depend on the classification of an item, its respective account and effect of transaction on that item. If in result of a transaction the asset increased, we enter the transaction amount on debit side of the asset account of that particular item. However, if in result of a transaction the asset decreased, we enter the transaction amount on credit side of the asset account of that particular item. Same treatment shall be applied for expenses. If in result of a transaction the expense increased, we enter the transaction amount on debit side of the expense account of that particular item. However, if in a transaction the expense account decreased, we enter the transaction amount on credit side of the expense account of that particular item. The recording rules for other classifications, liabilities, capital and income are inversely to the rules for assets and expenses. If the liability, capital or income increased in result of a transaction, we enter the transaction amount on credit side of the liability, capital or income account of that particular item. However, if in result of a transaction, the liability, capital or income decreased, we enter the transaction amount on debit side of the liability, capital or income account of that particular item. To complete the understanding of second function of accounting summarizing, now we learn double entry system and its features. Double entry system is an accounting system where each transaction is entered twice not only on the debit side of an account but also on the credit side of an account. It means that in result of a single transaction, two accounts will be affected. One account shall be debited while another account shall be credited. The complete double entry system based on a simple idea that total amount debited in a result of a transaction shall always be equal to amount credited in result of the same transaction. So you can say that every debit entry has always an equal and corresponding credit entry. This simple idea transforms into accounting equation which is what are the resources shall always be equal to who supplied them or you can say that total assets shall always be equal to total liabilities and capital. Now we have also learned 
the second step of accounting in detail and our next topics shall cover the third step which is recording or bookkeeping. As we have discussed in first lecture that by using the summarizing technique we record the transaction in respective book of accounts, sub ledgers and journal ledgers. We also discussed there that each book of account is used to record a specific type of transaction. Before proceeding further, we will now discuss the accounting cycle. During this discussion, we will learn which transaction to be entered in which book of account and what will be the flow of recording right from source document till we prepare the financial reports. The accounting cycle begins with the identification of the nature of transaction. Different nature of transactions can be credit sale, credit purchase, sales returns, purchase returns, cash payments and receipts, bank payments and receipts and others. As we have discussed earlier that there is a source document to record or document each type of transaction. In second step, we have to prepare the respective source document for each particular transaction. For example, sales invoice is a source document for sales transaction, credit note is a source document for sales return, purchase invoice is a source document for purchase transactions, debit note is a source document for purchase return, checks, bank deposit and slips are the source documents for bank payments and receipts. Similarly, receipts are the source document for cash paid and received transactions. And general vouchers are the source document for all other transactions. In third step, we enter each transaction in its respective book of account, which are sales day book, purchase day book, sales return day book, purchase return day book, cash and bank book and general journal. The relation between two is such that the credit sale is entered in the sales day book, the credit purchase is entered in purchase day book, credit note is entered in sales return day book, debit note is entered in purchase return day book, receipts entered in cash and bank book, while all other transactions are entered in general general. In fourth step, we prepare the ledgers from books of accounts. For all type of sales and purchase day books, we prepare sub ledgers in addition to the general ledger. But the transactions entered in all other books are only recorded in general ledgers. Remember that in all ledgers, we record transaction by maintaining the accounts. Now here, we discuss what are the sub ledgers. There are two sub ledgers, sale ledgers and purchase ledgers. In sales ledger, we maintain the personal accounts of customers, while in purchase ledgers, we maintain the personal accounts of vendors or suppliers. Once the general ledger is prepared and we want to prepare the financial reports, the accounts are closed and trial balance is prepared. This is the fifth step. It is important to remember that only the general ledger provides the basis of financial reports. Once the trial balance is prepared, the financial reports like profit and loss account and balance sheet are prepared in sixth and last step. This is the whole process through which each transaction is passed and ultimately reported in financial reports. The formats of source documents Recording of transaction in books of accounts, sub ledgers and journal ledgers shall be discussed in detail later on. At the end of today's lecture, we have a look what we have learned in this lecture. In the beginning of this lecture, we discussed the classifications, capital, assets, liabilities, income and expense in detail and explain all these with help of examples. After this, we learn the subclassification of liabilities, assets and expenses. 
liabilities and assets can be subclassified in current and non-current liabilities and assets respectively while expenses can be subclassified into capital expenses and revenue expenses. On completion of this discussion, we have finished our discussion on the first step of accounting that is classification. Then we learn what is an account, what is the format of an account, what information to be entered in an account under which column, why an account is called T account. All this discussion followed by the types of accounts. There are two types of accounts, personal accounts and impersonal accounts. Impersonal accounts can be further divided into the real accounts and nominal accounts. After this, we learned the double entry system and its feature. The whole double entry system is based on the simple idea of accounting equation and that is total assets shall always be equal to total liabilities and capital. With the end of this, we completed the learning of second step of accounting that is summarizing. Then we started our discussion on the third step of accounting that is recording. We learned here the accounting cycle of recording a transaction in books of accounts, sub ledgers and general ledger. We studied the steps to which each transaction go through right from initiation to reporting the transaction. That's all for today's lecture. I hope that you learned from this some new concepts of accounting and finance. We will meet in next lecture with more interesting topics. Till that time, take care and goodbye.